covering weapon systems across air, land, and sea. Welcome to Millpower Minis. Unlike previous fighter development programs, the flight test program team was closely integrated with the design team from the inception of the Raptor Combined Test Force. Testing instruments were incorporated into the nine engineering and manufacturing development Raptors built for the 111th Flight Test Squadron. Aircrafts 4001 through 4009 would join the CTF between 1998 and 2004, pushing the limits of the airframe's design and unveiling some truly remarkable capabilities. The CTF had a single goal, to determine if this new fighter could do everything it promised. The testing regiment would cover all capable altitudes, speeds, and G-loads. Raptor 4001 would make its first flight at Edwards on the 17th of May, 1998, signifying the formal beginning of the flight test process. A few months later, on July 30th, the same F-22 would partake in an hour and a half long mission with a KC-135 Stratotanker, testing the safe limits of operations for mid-air refueling. Her flight career would end in 2000 when she was transferred to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio for live fire damage tests. Raptor 4002, nicknamed Old Reliable, rejoined the flight program in late August 1998, being flown to Edwards from Marietta by then Director of Operations for the 411th Flight Test Squadron, Major Stephen Hooter Rainey. The four and a half hour cross-country flight demonstrated the endurance of the platform. After the flight, Major Rainey stated, it is the best flying aircraft I have flown, and it sets a new standard of excellence in fighter aviation. A pillar of the Raptor program, Major Rainey flew one of the chase planes that followed Paul Metz's F-22 during the Raptor's first flight. He also performed the first mid-air refueling in the jet, first to fly cross-country, and was the first active duty U.S. Air Force pilot to fly the new stealth fighter. Aircraft 4002 would be utilized for testing high angles of attack and weapon launches from the internal weapon space. Internal weapon testing took place on the ground ejecting AIM-120s from the main bay, while also jettisoning tanks and pylons stored on the wings. The fighter would be transferred to Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida as a ground instructional training unit. Aircraft 4003 joined the CTF in March 2003 and was unique being the first F-22 with the internal structure of a full production Raptor. This allowed the fighter to be utilized for tests requiring a 100% maximum load. It would also be the first aircraft to operate the internal M61A2 Vulcan cannon. However, it would only stay with the program for just under a year. On the 28th of September 2004, Raptor 4003 would undertake a flight test with two external tanks during which the airframe would be overstressed. After passing through the wake of an F-16, flight control software errors caused the aircraft to lose control. Though the maximum allowed G limit for this flight with a pair of bags on the fighter was listed at just over 7 G, the pilot pulled 11.7 Gs to recover. The aircraft landed safely yet never flew again. While the earliest EMD Raptors flew test flight characteristics and weapons testing, the brains of the F-22 was flying on board a modified Boeing 757 flying test bed. The avionics would be refined before flying on Raptor 4004 the first F-22 containing all of the sensors needed to locate, target, and shoot enemy aircraft. From this point on, all subsequent entries from 4005 to 4009 will be flown by the CTF, performing various tests ranging from weapons, speed, altitude, and G-forces. Today, even after the F-22 entered service in 2005, Raptors 4006, 4007, 4009, are still flying with the 411th Flight Test Squadron, testing new capabilities and sharpening the teeth of the ultimate predator of the skies.